Hey there, it's Jen from EmpathicMastery.com and to get a copy of the book, EmpathicMasteryBook.com and this book has got, it's my heart and soul and it has 380 pages of all kinds of solutions and information and help and support for dealing with what it's like to be highly sensitive and empathic and picking up all the thoughts, the feelings, the energy, the craziness that is going on in the world around us and how to not be completely spitting out as a result of it. So I, you know, right now, if you're stuck at home and you're looking for something to read, check out this book. Even though I wrote it, I have to say I'm incredibly proud of it. I, I really, there's a lot of really great tools in there. Anyway, enough of that. So if you want a copy, empathicmasterybook.com. You can actually go right there. See, there's there's a link there too. So I wanted to jump on and talk about a realization I had the other day, which was that in the midst of all of this, I've been praying like there is no tomorrow. I mean, I have been offering up prayers on a daily basis. I've been asking for just, I, I mean, the constant prayer has basically been, you know, Divine Mother, Holy Presence, Sacred Spirit, Divine Source, whatever name for God happens to be the one that comes out of my mouth at a particular time. Uh, lead me from my fretting mind, from the part of me that thinks I can figure all this stuff out and help me to sink into the serenity, love, and compassion of your sacred heart, as well as help me to connect with the global heart of love. So I've been praying. The other thing I've been doing and I've been leading here on my Facebook page is a lot of tapping videos, really like just tons and tons and tons of tapping. But what I realized, I was having a conversation. So, so yesterday, last night, I was, I was, you know, ch catching up with my dear boo, Britt Bullnick from In Arms Coaching, and I was just checking in with her, and I was saying that I've been noticing that there are these periods where it's like I'll dip, and one of the things that I've noticed is that when, um, you know, when my husband gets scared or gets, you know, watches the news and learns something and, and you know, there's a little bit of alarming information coming through, don't necessarily, you know, it's like, I would just say if you're really highly sensitive and empathic, be really mindful of how frequently you're turning on the news. You know, it's like, I really want to encourage you to curate your social media curate your news consumption, curate everything that has to do with how you're getting information. You know, um, there was a time in our life where only recently have we had this whole concept of 24-7 news and have we had this ability to just constantly know. When I was a child, it was like news was doled out with there was the morning paper and the evening paper and there was the morning news and the evening news. And basically, people got like doses of news as opposed to the way we get it now, which is just this nonstop bombardment. And I think the thing is, we're not made for nonstop bombardment. We really need breaks. So if you're not if you're not conscious of it, I just want to encourage you to really think about how much exposure are you getting to media that is just contributing to the awfulizing, contributing to the going down the rabbit hole and just imagining like, oh my God, if this, then that. Because the thing about human beings is that we do not do well not having answers. We don't, we, even though we are made of uncertainty and came from mystery and will return to mystery, we seem to have this thing where we are wired to want to know things. So when we don't know things, what we will often do is we will start imagining things because it's safer or easier to imagine things than it is to not know them. So the challenge with this time is that it's really easy to go down rabbit holes and imagine some pretty wild stuff. So I wanted to talk about the realization I had, which was so yesterday, you know, we turned on the news for a little while and I found myself after watching maybe 15 minutes of the news, um, you know, Wolf Blitzer and somebody else on CNN, all of a sudden I was just sinking again. I was thinking about 
all of the people who are suffering. I was thinking about all of the potential ways that this is going to ripple out and shift all kinds of things um, in unexplainable, unimaginable ways. And I found myself going into this sort of like darker place. And I could feel how vulnerable I was feeling. And I was noticing that I was also feeling kind of irritated by the people who are like doing all the love and light stuff and just talking about how hopeful all of this is because maybe I'm a Capricorn, maybe with Virgo rising, but there is a part of me that's just like before we can move to the hope, we absolutely must acknowledge the wound. You know, it's sort of that thing of if you really want to heal something, we have to address why the wound is here in the first place. And that's the thing I love about EFT is that the EFT acknowledges the challenge or the problem or the pain allows us to give air to it, put, you know, give it oxygen, give it light, give it love. And then from that shifts and miracles happen. So, you know, I just, I'm just noticing that in this time, there's this part of me that's like, I want to see truth. I don't necessarily just want to see happiness. But I'm also really aware that one of the things that's going on, and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit further with the whole humans want to know things and what this has to do with being grounded so what I realized has been going on is, as I was mentioning, I've been doing a ton of prayer. I've been doing a ton of tapping. I've been really like doing, I've been taking flower essences. I've been taking my vitamins. I've been working with, with the essential oils. I've been washing my hands like there is no tomorrow. I've been getting a lot of sleep. I've been eating good food, you know, and just really and resting a lot and taking really good care of myself. And I have completely forgotten to be reinforcing my filters and shields because usually they don't need a lot of reinforcement. And I've basically not necessarily been doing anything unusual to, re to, to find, to be grounded. And so what I realized is that ordinarily, when things are not extreme, I have a certain kind of baseline of being connected to the earth and having a filter of sort of like a bubble of light up around me that keeps me fairly safe. But what I just realized just yesterday as I was sort of scanning myself and talking with Brit and then doing some work later where I was doing some tapping and breathing um, on behalf of my, my VIP clients, what I realized was that there is that part of me that wants to know answers and the part of me that's actually fairly clairvoyant and can get information has been doing a psychic crawl and has been sending little tendrils out of my head and reaching out to try to get answers. But the problem is that that sort of information line where the phone lines are open right now means that an incredible amount of chaos and fear has been coming through and that is in it and that can make any of us feel incredibly unsettled and can make any of us feel really vulnerable and really scared and as empaths the challenge is that we tend to be psychic sponges who pick up energy that is coming not just from you know ourselves or from triggers and things like that but also a lot of times we're picking up on the low you know the local the the interpersonal but often even just global and sometimes even galactic energies and so the challenge is in a time like this it's really important to be aware of the part of us that is reaching out to try to get answers and and basically is opening up sort of the information channels and receiving a lot more information than we may be, be able we may be able to handle so a couple things i wanted to suggest so tools um I am a very, very strong believer in the power of flower essences. I actually just made a flower essence today using um, Snowdrop. 
I've been and thinking about making a, a snowdrop essence, you know, for years. But every time it's like, it always kind of like the snowdrops come and go before I go, oh, I should make an essence. But thankfully, because the world is turned upside down, I actually made a snowdrop essence today. And what I really got from the snowdrop was this deep sense of our resilience our that life goes on that despite the length of winter despite the hardships despite the difficulties that all will be well that we get through the ordeals and i've been i was really thinking about it, the energy of sort of the blessed mother particularly mary as a divine source and as as a guide and about just the fact that she takes our sorrows she takes our suffering but she's also been through it herself and so she offers that that persistence the perseverance and the safety of no matter how much it sucks there is grace no matter how hard it is there it you know there is this point at which it finds its way through and i think the thing is that the truth is there will be collateral damage there will be casual casualties to this there will be changes and i just want to acknowledge that because when i say all will be well for me, this really comes down to the fundamental fabric of the universe being made of love, being made of, of, of goodness, being made of positive energy, and ultimately, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, we come from the stars, we come from the mystery, we return to the mystery. And that is, for me, that is one of the things that helps me through this, is knowing that there was a place I was before I got here, and I was okay. And I will go back to a place that I don't necessarily completely understand or know, although I've had enough encounters with people from the other side and have had some pretty amazing experiences that leads me to believe that this body is simply one stage of existence. It's not the end of all of it. So even if there is, you know, even if death and illness is part of what happens from this, it doesn't necessarily mean that all, you know, like all hope is lost. Okay. But I had said I was going to talk to you guys about grounding and I kind of, you know, got off on a riff about safety and all will be well. So just a couple things. Rescue remedy. You can get some. At least last time I checked, you can get it on Amazon. I will share a link with you guys so that you can actually help me buy crystals by when you buy from my affiliate link it's like seriously it's like a couple pennies that i get it's not like you're gonna get me any major crystals but it is helpful and all help is welcome so rescue remedy is a really good resource for when you are spinning out you're feeling really uncomfortable you're not really sure what you want to be doing or or how to manage it it takes the edge off also Another thing that I really find really helpful is the homeopathic remedy Ignatia Amara. And Ignatia Amara is good for two things. In my experience, it's really good for grief. It has a tendency to sort of just take the rawness out of grief. And right now, all of us, if we are in touch with it, are going to be feeling some grief because life is changing. And even if we want it to change, there are things that are shifting that maybe we weren't so keen on having shifted. So Ignatia Amar is really good for taking the rawness and the edge out of grief. It's also really good for, it, and it specifically says on the bottle, nervousness due to everyday stress. So it's really good for helping with just that agitation, that nervousness, that feeling kind of like anxious. So it's another really great resource in your empathic safety toolkit or, you know, first aid kit. And then this bottle is not um, the current label. It's not accurate for flower essence services, um, but it is basically, it's by FES. 
and it's Yarrow Environmental Solution. I think that's what they're still calling it. But basically what it is, is it's a mixture of all the Yarrows and it's also got a bunch of other things in it that are all designed to support the resilience and the, um, uh, like the per you know sort of the impermeability of the the strength the tensile strength of our energy body of our of our protective filters and shields of our aura and to allow us to navigate really intense times so yarrow is generally a really good psychic protector and yarrow environmental solution or it used to be called yarrow special formula is really good for all of the different ways that we can be affected by taking on physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic stuff. It helps to reinforce and strengthen our filters and shields. And that leads me to talking about being grounded. So, you know, I remember being really young and hearing people talking about, you know, ground, ground, ground. And I know that there was a period in my life where I was like, what does that even mean? Like, I would go through the motions of grounding. I would I would pretend to ground because I saw other people do it. So I'd like put my hands on the earth and I might get down and kneel and put my head on the, you know, my forehead on the earth. I might go hug a tree. But I didn't really understand what I was doing or how it, what it meant to be grounded. And so one of the things that I will say is that, and I'm just realizing I'm talking really excited, so I'm going to calm my voice down. Okay. Yes. Let's just take a, let, Jennifer is going to take a sip of water. And those of you who are here, how are you guys doing? What's going on for you? Hey, Lorraine, so good to see you. Um, so what I was going to say is that what I have found, and this is the thing about being grounded. So first off, being grounded is literally being connected, well, literally energetically connected to the earth, feeling yourself standing on the earth and not just free floating. So one of the things about being grounded that's really important is being in our bodies. And in my experience, oh yes, Victoria, I'm so glad that the serpent and serpent energy, that idea of the serpent or the snake that lives deep in the earth and there's this whole um, imagery that exists in many different, in a lot of mythology of sort of the idea of we have a serpent that is within us that represents the energy in our body. And that, you know, sort of the tail is down in the earth and the head is sort of in above our crown and that we are, but the, and another way of looking at it is that we are like a column of light or another way of thinking of ourselves is that we are a tree and in the same way that a tree has roots that go down that are not seen and branches that reach up you could think of us as being connected to the earth with sort of roots that we don't even see going down into the earth so we've got sort of energetic tendrils or energetic energetic beams of light that go or energy that go down into the earth and then we also have un you know invisible energy or some people can actually see it but energy that extends out past us past the crown chakra and actually can reach all the way up to that divine source to the light and in my experience, when both sides are open, when the light is flowing down and the energy of the earth and strength of the earth is flowing up, that's when our ability to be clear, our ability to receive information, our ability to get guidance is strongest. And when our intuition is most likely going to be accurate, as opposed to skewed by our concerns or our fears. So 
What I have found, though, is that when we're not in our body, when we are hovering up in our head, when we are hovering up in our worry, when we are projecting into the future, when we are thinking about either the past and reliving it, or we are imagining the future and projecting all kinds of stories into what's going to happen next, it's almost impossible to be grounded. Because in order to be grounded, we need to be here now, and we need to be in our body. And so often we will leave our bodies and be ungrounded into, you know, either because we are in the past or the future, or because you've probably heard about chakras and the idea of energy centers in our body. And so we have these energy centers that start actually beneath our feet and go all the way above our head. But there's these sort of vortexes or centers that come from, you know, that that tend to that, that, that the bottoms of our feet and then moving up into like their sort of smaller, smaller places or vortexes of energy in our ankles and our knees. And then we've got the seven major chakras, starting with the root chakra, which is right down at your groin and then going to the belly to the set or the uterus for the second chakra, going up to the third chakra, which is the solar plexus, heart chakra, fourth chakra, throat chakra is the fifth chakra, then the third eye, and then the crown chakra. These are the seven major chakras. And what I've seen for myself and also for a lot of other people is that especially as empaths, especially as people who've been through challenging experiences and then add any kind of abuse or difficulties or traumatic experiences, what very, very, very frequently happens is we get out of the lower chakras. We leave our root chakra especially and we get up into our like we get up into our head, we get up high into the higher chakras. And it's very common for a lot of us, especially if the world did not feel safe and it wasn't safe to be in our body as a kid, we would leave our body. And so the challenge is that that often means if you've been hovering above your body for years and years and years, that actually means that you may not even know what it means to be grounded. And that was my experience. That was completely my experience. And that was what happened for me, was that people would say ground, and I didn't really understand what it meant to ground because I was living pretty much from, sometimes from the heart up, but most of the times I was living from the throat up like I was like I was just basically I and I was often hovering above my body so I wasn't even in my body and interestingly two manifestations of this of this thing is that you will often see ungrounded people or people who are hovering outside of their body a lot of times weight is either you're either somebody will either be very thin um, because their body is basically sort of missing energy. And as a result, it's like their body cannot retain weight. Or in the case of a number of us, our bodies will hold on to weight to keep us safe as we are not embodied, as we are not dwelling in our body. So the first step or the first piece of being grounded is about letting ourselves be in our body, choosing to be here choosing to breathe into our body and actually exist or dwell in all of us as opposed to the places that feel more comfortable. And as females, um, I, there may be some males on, on watching this, but I'm going to speak for females because I am female. As a female, one of the other pieces of this is that there is so much, so many negative messages about being in a female body and particularly around the safety of our sexuality that a lot of times women will 
even if they're in their body, they'll basically kind of void out from the root and the second chakra and start functioning from the third, from the solar plexus, because it's just so, it can feel so scary to be in those lower chakras. And yet when it comes to being grounded, being fully embodied in our body is the key to actually being able to be grounded. And from that ability to be grounded, we will be able to create much more resilient and protective filters and shields. So if you guys who are watching right now, um, you know, like as I'm talking about this, can you like give me some thumbs up, give me some hearts, maybe give me some <gasps> faces if this is just totally, you know, totally new news to you or or whatever. And, you know, let me know what you're thinking, what your experience, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had the experience of just not being in your body or being in only part of your body? So let's talk about so I'm, I'm gonna, oh, awesome. I'm seeing you guys are saying, yep, this is totally resonating. So I'm going to talk about my approach to being in my body. Um, because that's all I can do. And I will say that your mileage may vary. And I'm bringing you 35 years of experience, strength and hope, and working with a lot of clients. And so uh, it, you know, it's like, it, it's not like I'm just spit you know spitballing with you here i am sharing information that has worked for me and a lot of other people so the first thing about being grounded versus being ungrounded is just even starting to recognize where am i in my body am i hovering above am i am i spread out and reaching out all across the world is my heart over at you know the retirement community with my parents Am I suddenly concerned about somebody I absolutely love in another country? Where am I? And in a lot of ways, what we need to do is once we start recognizing that we're not in our body, that we're not around, that we may, you know, that or that part of us has gone someplace else, part of this is about sort of reeling ourselves back in drawing ourselves back into our body and inviting ourselves home. So if we notice, oh yeah, I've been really concerned about so-and-so and part of me has been pinging them and sending tendril and has tendrils out and has this connection out to try to understand what's going on. One of the things that can be really helpful is honoring the love, honoring the connection, and simultaneously choosing to return to ourselves. Because a lot of times when we are sort of spread out that way, it's kind of that whole thing of put your oxygen mask on first. This is a time where we need our oxygen masks on more than ever. And when we are spread out and reaching out past our body, a lot of times it's very hard to access the oxygen mask. So the first step is recognize, which that's the first step in empathic mastery. So the first step is recognize, oh, I'm not in my body. Oh, I'm hovering above my body. Oh, I am in the past. Oh, I am in the future. Oh, I am worrying about this person and part of me is in another country right now. Or maybe it was like, um, I'll give you an example. My husband and I went to the natural food store a couple days ago and there was this very sweet elderly gentleman wearing a mask and he saw us come in and he was wearing gloves and a mask and he said, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, my wife, but my wife has leukemia and I just need to be super, super careful. And I just got this download of his fear, you know, of how precious his wife was to him. And how terrifying going to the grocery store was for him. And, you know, that awareness just kind of like normally I could bless him and just kind of let it drop and move forward. But because I was already so open, it took me a couple days before I was able to completely drop that sort of um, hook, as it were. So that's sort of an example of how we can be leaving our body. 
So once we recognize that we are outside of our body, then the next step is releasing the stuff that is not serving us, releasing the fear, the stress, the worry, the pain, the sadness that is not ours. And, you know, and I think that the best way to do it in a time where there is global suffering, where there is a lot of fear, I personally believe that the only, only way through this is with compassion. That it is because we can't light wash this. We can't, as an empath, it's like it just, for me, it rings really insincere to just be like, well, I'm fine and, and therefore it's all okay. It's like, no, the only way through this is love. And the only way through this is profound compassion and gratitude if you are safe. Gratitude for the pla you know, the place where I am, gratitude for the place where you are, gratitude for a body that can hold you. So that releasing, you know, as you might imagine, tapping is my go-to tool for that. But very quickly, when you are just noticing, oh my God, I'm really ungrounded and I need more support, the one of the best ways to go about doing this is just inhaling pre into your body and really choosing to be in your body with your inhale so that you start breathing all the way into the places where maybe you haven't even been. And part of this is also about having a commitment to yourself that you've got your back, having a commitment to yourself that your behaviors are going to keep you safe. So this is one of those places where there's a little bit of a come to Jesus reckoning that can happen for ourselves when it comes to being really safe. And that is we need to be willing to be honest with ourselves about the ways that we are engaging in any kind of self-harm or risky behavior that would have us leave ourselves because we don't trust ourselves to keep ourselves safe. So for example, if you are self-medicating with a lot of weed or drinking a lot of alcohol or in gambling or engaging in a lot of sort of what feels like risky inter you know emotional or you know sexually intimate relationships or anything any kind of thing where you kind of know that you're pushing up against the edge of it and you might be able to get away with it now but it kind of feels off later those kinds of behaviors keep us from being grounded. Those kinds of behaviors keep us out of our body. And in order to really welcome ourselves back into our bodies, we need to have a covenant with ourselves that we're going to take really good care of ourselves, that we're willing to be willing to do the things we need to do to take care of ourselves and honor ourselves. And sometimes that's boring, you know? Sometimes it, it is really boring. Sometimes it's like, it's much more fun to have that shot of scotch. It's much more fun to go to the bar or the party in the middle of a coronavirus outbreak. Sometimes it really is like, wow, I would love to be able to do these other things. And I know what is safest for me now is, is this. So once we have that, awareness and the agreement that we're going to take care of ourselves, then we can use our breath to one, inhale into our body and really inhabit our body as fully as possible. So using our breath and just breathing into ourselves and feeling what it's like to feel your butt on the seat, feel your feet on the floor, feeling yourself here in this space and feeling, feeling your existence, like feeling how it is to be here. So breathing into your body and then breathing out the stress, the tension, the worry, all the concerns. And sometimes a sigh can be very, very helpful with this. And if you can, getting outside, putting your feet on the ground, feeling your feet on the earth. And instead of just trying to do it all by yourself, really letting yourself feel the support of the earth. So starting to expand into your awareness that you are an individual, but you are also a cell 
in the body of this planet, that you are a, you are a living part of a much greater living entity and that there is so much more support than just you alone. So breathing into our body and really coming here and inhabiting our this space is the very first step. Well, awareness is the first step, but, but to really get here, breathing into our body and being in our body is the very first step to grounding. And then there's all kinds of fancy schmancy stuff where it's like you're sending your roots down into the earth, you're sending your branches up to the sky, you're running the beam of light through you, you're connected to the heart of the earth, you're connected to the, you know, to the heavenly, heavenly source of wisdom above, however it works for you. There's all of that, that groovy stuff. But if we're not in our body first and foremost, all of that is kind of icing on the cake. So just starting by being aware, then going into choosing to be in our body, assuming that we do feel safe to be in our body. And I also want to make a plug for if in this conversation, you're realizing, hmm, maybe I don't feel so safe being in my body right now. That's okay. And that's very understandable, considering all of the things that are going on. And I guess what I would say is, what is it going to take for it to feel safer to be embodied? What do you need in order to breathe into your body? What do you need in order to feel that being here on this planet is okay? And that's such an incredibly personal thing that I certainly can't answer that question for you, but it's definitely a question that is worth asking. Now, the paradox is that nine times out of 10, when we are actually in our body, when we are calm, when we are able to be present, we can handle whatever the universe throws at us. We can handle the curveballs so much more effectively than when we are not in our body because there is a certain way you know the universe or nature abhors a vacuum and when we're not in our body it leaves it open for other people's energy it leaves it open for um dark weird entity stuff it leaves us open for picking up viruses and illnesses and all kinds of other ways that the energy is going to try to like like there's going to be something there and if we're not there then then what will be there in its place so the choice to be in our body is the first step to being grounded and then we get to connect we get to make the connection to the energy of the earth we can make the connection to that divine sky wisdom, you know, that heavenly light. And with that, as we become aware of the beam of light that moves through us, we can then extend it out beyond us and we can build up our filters and shields so that we can start creating a permeable or a, you know, a filter that allows information to come in but protects us, creates resilience, and stops all of the like incredible amount of fear from flowing in and bombarding us. So within recognize, release, protect, connect, and act, oh God, Lorraine, I, I, my brother is, I have a brother who is um, at a major hospital in, in, in Massachusetts right now. And I feel you, you know, it's, I know a number of people right now who are just by their nature are in harm's way. And what I will say is that God bless the souls that know it's their mission to be on the front lines. What I believe is that my job and Lorraine, your job is to be an anchor. Our job and Victoria, I know it's your job too. 
Our job is to be the anchors for light and our job is to do the surrogate support and offer that but from our center to radiate support out as opposed to extending ourselves past our own body to offer support but you know i will be offering and doing um surrogate videos surrogate tap alongs as for, you know like on a regular basis as we go through this intense period and i and i was planning on perhaps i'll do it tomorrow when i jump on i was planning on um yeah, the Mary, Mary Fran, the, the courage they have to go into the fire. And, you know, the thing is, it's not just the medical people. It's also, um, you know, I was in the post office today and I was talking to the my postal clerk. She's going to be working eight hours tomorrow getting over, you know, thankfully getting paid overtime. But during the off hours, she is going to be wiping down every single surface in the entire facility. And it's a large post office facility. And um, and then she's going to have to wipe down all of the surfaces in every single postal truck as well, as well as like every single post office box. Like she's going to be responsible for cleaning and wiping down and disinfecting every single surface. And the thing is, you've got your grocery workers, you've got your truckers, you've got your delivery people, you've got your mail clerks, you've got your pharmacists, you've got all of the gas station attendants, all of these people who are um, in what is considered essential or necessary jobs. And I just want to say, God bless all of the people here in the United States who are getting paid 12 bucks an hour, and they are still being expected to show up and be in these places where it's risky. So my plan is to create anchors and space where we can, we who are safe at home can continue to offer support and spread the love and spread the light and especially spread calmness as opposed to fear and panic. So let's see. We were talking about, you know, I was talking about this idea of just really working from the place of wholeness within us and really reinforcing and strengthening the light within us and also strengthening the filters and shields around us so that instead of it being we are kind of extent overextended what we're doing is we're giving from the surplus we're giving from the overflowing cup of love as opposed to that intense panicked place where we're trying to be helpful but we are not calm where we are not relaxed ah <sighs> so let us let me see I'm just trying to think if there is what else i wanted to share about what it means to be grounded and for me what it means to be grounded is it means one that i am in my body and i am in this moment here and now and two, I am connected to the earth and I am connected to the sky. And I am deeply aware that I am not alone, that I am so much bigger than just me. And knowing, feeling that I am a cell in the body of the earth and that we are like a neural net and that we like I'm a nerve cell, you're a nerve cell. And we all are interconnected. We all feel each other. But we are also so much more than, you know, I'm so much more than Jennifer. And Lorraine, you're so much more than Lorraine. And Victoria, you're so much more than Victoria. Mary Fran, you're so much more than Mary Fran. Like we are all part of this much larger thing. And when we are aware of that and connected to it, that is when we can be grounded. So... In Empathic Mastery, the book, I have detailed instructions for how to really, really develop and build up your Earth Sky, your Earth Star, Earth Sky connection, and how to reinforce and strengthen your filters and shields by, and and as a result, creating a deeper sense of safety and protection. 
And by doing that, basically being able to, you know, wobble but not fall down. So the beauty of this is that not only does the book have this information, but also when you buy the book, you get access to my empathic safety, the empathic safety kit. And that has an audio meditation for the Earth Sky meditation. It leads you through this. And there are a lot of very practical, very solid, very useful tools for helping you to really, really, really get grounded. So if you jump over, if you haven't already bought a copy, I highly recommend this book. I know I wrote it. So you know, I have to like sort of be like, okay, ego aside, this book is the bomb. And I really, really want to encourage you to go grab a copy if you don't already have one empathicmasterybook.com. It will, it will basically give you the tools that you need to Recognize what's yours and not yours. Release the stuff that is no longer serving you. Create filters. Ground yourself Create and create filters and shields that protect you. Connect with divine source and then change the way you live your life and act in ways that really support you to be of service and to realize your gifts and realize your mission and your purpose for being here on this planet. So... I am just going to, before I jump, I'm going to share with you guys the a really, really simple, so we've talked about you're aware of what it's like to be in your body, you're breathing into your body. I want to invite you to sometime in the next 24 hours, if you can, go stand outside somewhere. You don't have to be barefoot unless it's warm enough that you can do it and it doesn't suck. Um, but if you're here in Maine or someplace cool, you can keep your shoes on like I did. But go stand outside somewhere. Put your feet on the ground. Put your feet on the earth. Breathe into your body. So we're going to just breathe in, you know. And, and this is, again, where we did the exercise where we had our hands over our heart. You can put your, if it's appropriate, put your hands on your chest and breathe into your body. And then exhale the worry and the fear and the stress. Doing it again. And exhaling. One more time. And exhaling. Feeling your feet on the ground. And if you're standing outside, feeling your connection and sending your awareness all the way down to the very heart of the earth. And then what you do is you use your inhale to draw the support of the earth up through you. So I actually like to lean, you know, look down. And as I inhale through my nose, it's like a kid who's using a straw. And what I do is I'm inhaling and I'm sucking the energy up through my feet as if my legs are straws. And I'm drawing the energy of the earth up through me. And then I'm lifting, you can see I moved my head from down to up, and then I'm exhaling up to the sky. And then when I'm reaching up to that divine source, that heavenly wisdom, I draw down that light. And again, move my head, looking down and exhaling it to the earth. You can hear Bob in the background. He just just made that little happy puggy sound so just again another breathing the energy of the earth up setting it to the sky breathing the energy of the sky down and sending it to the earth one more time up and inhaling the energy of the sky and sending it down and now as you face forward breathing in all of that energy like drawing it from both the earth and the sky at the same time and as you exhale breathing it out in circles around you so you are actually like extending the ball oh that's too funny <laughs> Oh, that is just too funny that Maisie snorted back. Yeah, Bob and Maisie are like, they're like 
like bookends on either side of the country. That's so awesome. Ah, uh, well, and Mary Fran, I'm glad your copy is at the other that your copy is there. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> God bless the people who are playing video games as their way of dealing with this whole situation. Okay, so as we just take in another deep breath, I want you to draw the energy of the earth into your body, the energy of the sky in, and just breathe in light. Really breathe it in. And exhale and just imagine that your breath is able to create like a cocoon of light and safety all around you. So you're just... I always think of it as almost like, you know, those old cotton candy machines where the light is just circling all around us. And that is the really basic stuff for how to show up, be grounded, be in our body. So sometime in the next 24 hours, please go outside and do what we just did where you breathe the energy of the earth up and you send it to the sky, you breathe the energy of the sky down and you send it to the earth and you inhale and fill your body with the light and support and the love that is so, is everywhere on this planet. There is so much love on this planet and there is so much compassion and life wants to thrive. Life wants to go on and as human beings, we have we have missed the mark we have fallen out of balance you know there is a term that i there was a movie that came out back in the 80s called koyana scotsi and it is a um the word koyana scotsi means basically life out of balance and the whole thing is we are koyana scotsi we are out of balance right now and this virus is a wake-up call it's an invitation to honor the ways we're out of balance and to nurse and heal ourselves back into stasis back into balance back into stability you know and i could go off on this whole um this whole sort of religious conversation about the roots of the word sin and that the word sin itself means missing the mark, you know, missing the point. And instead of looking at what's happening or looking at sin as something awful or willful, simply looking at it as, oh yeah, we are missing the mark here. We have been sliding out of control. Things have been slipping into chaos. And this is an opportunity for us to come back to center, for us to come back to balance, for us to come back to stillness, and for us to come back to what really matters, which in my personal opinion is love. Like love is the answer love compassion kindness sweetness gentleness grace gratitude this is where it's at so go stand outside when you get a chance put your feet on the ground make that connection feel your heart as connected to the global heart and know that you are a point of light that is connected to a million points of light, billions of points of light that are blanketing this entire earth. So I'll come back around tomorrow. I need to look at my calendar and just figure out what else I've got going on. So I'm not going to say I'll be on at a, you know, when exactly, but I will announce something in my Facebook page. And I'm thinking that tomorrow what I want to do is I want to focus on um, the connecting to the global heart and firing the grid, like lighting the grid. Because one of the reasons why, in case you're curious, why I have the um, flower of life everywhere, like it's a symbol that I use constantly, for me, the flower of life represents the way we as human beings are interconnected on this planet, that each circle represents one of us. And all of these circles spread out and extend. 
And each point, you know, there's sort of these little tiny points where, you know, of intersection, which, you know, the inner flowers, which are, are, is sort of the inner flowers, which I sort of think of as though, you know, each inner flower, those, this little, those little points, those are us. And, but it's this amazing, like, you know, like on the floor now, um, you know, the thing is like, I have my flower interconnects with my husband, with Bob, the pug, with all of you guys who I work with and I love, with, um, you know, with my siblings, with my beloved friends, that we create these flowers and everybody has connections that then reinforce it and the entire planet is covered with this web of love. And the more aware, the more connected, the more um, conscious we all become of this web of love, this web of light, that we are cells, that we are nerves, you know, nerve cells that are interconnected and communicating constantly with each other, then we can start using the, the fire when the grid gets fired when the grids are fired up when the grid gets lit then we have the ability to support and extend far more blessings far further across the planet so tomorrow i will come back and i will i will share a fire the grid with all of you guys and uh in the meantime like i said if you haven't already gotten a copy of the book, then I highly recommend go over to empathicmasterybook.com to grab a copy for yourself. It is a, it's a dense read, but and it's got a lot of really, really useful information. And if you know other light workers, if you know other empaths, if you know other people who are really just trying to navigate these crazy times and you think that I would be somebody who could be useful or helpful for them, then please help me get this video out into the world and any of, of the other videos that I've been putting out for this time. Please like this. Please hit the share button. Please pass it along to other people who find it useful. Send it to them as a private PM if they're not the kind of people who do well to be tagged or tag a friend. And Victoria, sleep well. Have a wonderful evening. Um, give Maisie a big hug for me and Mary Fran Lorraine all of you guys I am sending you so much love thank you so much for being here thank you for helping me to spread the word thank you for sharing thank you for connecting the light workers and please if you have the time and the inclination welcome back tomorrow we'll do some light work and firing the grid and then um I'm thinking probably since it is tomorrow's a good day for firing the grid because it's a Sunday. Not everybody's going to be work like Monday. People will probably be more at work. And then I'm thinking probably Monday will be a really good day for doing another layer of surrogate support, particularly for all of the people who are in the line of fire, who are showing up and doing this intense work. And, um, you know, and for what it takes to override your fear on a daily basis to keep showing up and and honestly putting ourselves in harm's or themselves in harm's way. So I'm thinking Monday for a second for another surrogate video and uh, let's just keep on keeping on. Let's keep spreading the word. And uh, in the meantime, I am sending you so much love. And I am sending you so much. And I'm also sending you the snowdrop medicine that I made today, which is the medicine and the message of resilience and hope. The message of, you know, just really feeling the power of the snowdrop of like she, you know, the flower essence is like the Hail Mary pass. When you feel like, um, like it's the last resort, it's that, that message of like, will anything work? And snowdrop just, she rears her head just as we think, you know, the end of winter, like winter will never be over. Snowdrop comes up and says, life persists. I made it through. I'm okay. There is hope. There is possibility. Life goes on.
it's okay. It will be okay. So I'm going to end with that message. All kinds of love to all of you guys. And I will catch up with you tomorrow. Okay. Peace. Thank you.